as the Nigerian electricity supply industry continues to remain stunted for a plethora of reasons. A costly glance at the challenges in the power sector shows that the bottlenecks range from limited investments in gas processing and transportation infrastructure to a centralized and inefficient transmission grid with limited wheeling capacity. Add to this a tariff regime that does not reflect the cost of operations in the electricity value chain. And what you have is a recipe for disaster. The end result is that Africa's largest economy is only able to dispatch around 4,000 megawatts of electricity daily, an amount that is grossly inadequate for a country with a population of 200 million people. Joining us now from our Abuja studio to take a deep dive into the power sector and what needs to be done by government and other stakeholders to improve electricity supply in the country is a special advisor to the president on power and infrastructure, Hamad Rafai Zakari. Prior to his current appointment, Zakari was the executive director of General Electric's power business for Sub-Saharan Africa. Welcome to the show, Ahmad Zakari. It's good to have you on the program. Hello, Ahmad good Zakari. Morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. Yes, it's good to see you again. Yeah, very quickly, uh, one of the uh, major issues we discussed on this program not too long ago is the uh, disclosure by the NERC uh, that uh, discos will be penalized uh, for not uh, supplying uh, electricity within the A to E uh, band uh, for service-based uh, uh, tariffs. Now, how is that going to work out? Is there a mechanism in place uh, for monitoring the default uh, for the non-delivery of service? Uh, what, what are the issues involved? Uh, yes, thank you uh, for that question, uh, Mr. Abati. Service-based tariff uh, as a um, approach to the power sector um, really focuses in on customers should pay for the service they're getting uh, while the distribution companies are incentivized to improve service before they're able to uh, achieve higher tariffs. There was always a clamor for cost-reflective tariff. Let's raise everybody's tariff. And the view of the administration uh, from a policy position and the regulator was that we needed to change the conversation to say areas that get 20 plus hours of power, 16 plus hours of power, they should pay a higher rate. But to give effectiveness to that um, approach, there needs to be penalties. Uh, so what the regulator has always said, uh, NERC, is that uh, as we execute the service-based tariff, there will be periodic reviews Areas that are receiving below their band, say you have an area that is in band B and is supposed to get 16 hours plus and they receive less than that, there will be a refund uh, and a debanding. Um, and certain areas that are receiving higher, a disco can apply to, to upgrade them. But there's never been a conversation on the power sector in Nigeria that has linked execution and payment to service. Which is, uh, which is what uh, the service-based tariff is effectively doing. Well, about time, certainly. I'm sure you'll agree. I'd like your take on other issues in the power sector, like the unbundling of TCN. Let's start there. Yeah, so I think uh, the TCN matter, it's good you use the word unbundling. There's many different discussions ongoing. Um, if you look at the requirements of the 2005 Electric Power Sector Reform Act, uh, the, the, the act that governs the, the power sector currently, um, it does provide a provision for unbundling TCN into uh, an independent system operator who will manage the movement of power, the scheduling of power, uh, almost an administrative role for the grid, uh, and secondly, a transmission service provider who will, uh, that entity would work on the infrastructure. So the provision is that uh, at, uh, 
at a time when the market has reached a certain level of maturity that the Minister of Power, alongside the National Council on Privatization, can engage uh, with Mr. President and seek uh, approval to proceed with the unbundling. Unbundling into these two constituent parts would be a precursor to any potential uh, privatization or um, concessioning of the entity. So the the conversations are ongoing. Um, TCN is one of the entities in the in in, in the privatization schedule uh, of BPE. So both the EPSRE Act and BPE's um, requirements must work together. Where we're working on step one, which is a structure for unbundling. Subsequently, we'll then work on step two, which is uh, assessing how best to privatize or concession or commercialize the, the TCN for, for better and improved service. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us, uh, Rafai. Real quickly, I'd like to talk about you know, the power sector and talk about some steps that have been taken to improve. And I want to understand the full gamut of the Siemens deal. Uh, a lot of people, when the deal was signed, a lot of people felt, oh, this will help. But it's still quite very unclear, as it were, around the deal. What is it going to give to us? What is it going to bring? You know, how is it going to change the power sector? And secondly, uh, I want to talk a little bit about TCN. I mean, we had the Manitoba Hydro deal at a point, but we saw that didn't work. So how is this unbundling going to change things, really? Uh, if we're still unbundled to the hands of cronies that, that wouldn't do anything with it properly, we'll still get a desired result. I mean, we all know that it's not that the science is failing as regards the past sector in Nigeria. It's just the human will that screws everything up. It's not that we're deficient of the science. You know, we have nuclear, we have solar, we have all sorts. But the human will fails all of us. So I've um, continued to say this in, in, in fora that I've had the opportunity to speak at, which is I think we should all be uh, frustrated um, and impatient about the power sector uh, because without a firm growing power sector, we continue to lose economic opportunities. Um, but at the same time, what we must prevent is that frustration to lead us to policy somersaults that will uh, potentially drag the industry back. Uh, in relation to uh, the Siemens transaction, and I'll talk more broadly about infrastructure investments, where we've come from is we've been subsidizing consumption uh, between the years of uh, 2016 or 2015 to 2019, say even as far back as 2013, we had a regime where we focused on allowing the discos to operate and whatever revenue we received from them, we would then top off from the government and push to the generating companies, which led us to to, to spending about $1.7 trillion without much improvement. So that transition from subsidizing consumption to infrastructure is what this administration, with our current policies led by Engineer Saleh Mamman, uh, are, are executing. So essentially, if you think right. about uh, right. what uh, we've done uh, with... Can you hear me, please? Uh, uh, okay, thank you so much. We'll go for a yes, quick break. Yes, I can. Can we'll you hear me? We'll go for a quick me? break. We'll come back and we'll take your thoughts. Thank you so much for your time. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the morning show, right here on the Rise News Channel. We'll have uh, Hamad Arafai Zakari, and uh, we're talking about the past. He's a special advisor to the president on the power and infrastructure. So you were answering the question I asked earlier and before we went to that break. Apologies about the break anyway. No problem. So what I was saying is we're transitioning from subsidizing consumption 
uh, into providing funds for infrastructure, which is critically what this sector needs. As you stated, it, it's not rocket science. You know, many countries have uh, grown their power sectors, but you have to actually put the hard infrastructure on the ground. So um, with the suite of investments and infrastructure funding that we have, we're targeting to utilize about 3 to $5 billion over the next uh, 24 months, putting it into the uh, infrastructural development of uh, the sector. So for example, um, I like to say the year before uh, President Bahari came into power, the whole budget for TCN uh, was about $30 million. Um, and in an environment where you'd been growing your generation capacity, you obviously had a, a mismatch. Uh, but we now have uh, funds from World Bank uh, through the uh, TREP, about $1.6 billion. Um, you guys, uh, I think, have reported recently uh, that we signed uh, the DISREP agreement, which is another $500 million uh, on the distribution sector. Um, the CBN has put out emergency funds on um, the distribution sector as well as uh, transmission distribution interfaces uh, to the tune of about $500 million. Um, and then um, we have the Siemens Presidential Power Initiative, which... Uh, we've signed the, 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 the engineering agreements, and that will also bring northwards of $2 billion uh, over time. So we're taking an approach of any funding available for the sector. We look at the performance improvement plans of the discos that we're regulatory holding them accountable for. And as they receive funds, they will align their projects with the funds that are available uh, first. Uh, as I said, we, we should all be impatient, uh, but you can see that where the funds come in and the execution is happening, like in the National Mass Metering Program, many citizens have reported that they've received their free meters. It is reducing suspicion in the sector, and it's helping us improve our revenue and the sustainability of the uh, ecosystem through improving liquidity. Very quickly, uh, Ahmad Zakari, let me ask you uh, this question about metering. In October, I think, 2020, uh, the uh, government introduced what uh, was called the National Mass Metering uh, Program, NMMP, uh, to check arbitrary uh, uh, billing uh, by discos and also to prevent electricity theft. Where are we with that? How much progress has been made? Because it will look like the uh, challenge of arbitrary estimated billing is still there. Electricity theft challenge is still there. How much progress have we made? And you talked about the TCN within the uh, value chain. Uh, you, you, you were using the word unbundling. What's the difference between unbundling and privatization? Because those who criticize the TCN as a weak link in that chain are even saying that, look, government should just get out of it completely and just privatize it. Yeah, great uh, questions. On National Mass Metering Program, um, it re replaced the MAP program, which was uh, uh, requiring for private investors to come in and uh, sell meters on behalf of the discos and recoup their money over time. But there were challenges in the structure, and there was an option for citizens to pay. Um, President Buhari, who keeps a pulse on what's uh, going on understands very clearly that uh, billing people, arbitrary billing, is one of the main challenges of the sector. So he mandated uh, that we transition into a national mass metering program uh, that's uh, fully funded. Uh, the estimated 6 million uh, meter gap in the country uh, will be eliminated by the end of the life of this administration. We're in phase zero now, uh, which the central bank uh, has provided funding for. Uh, thus far, uh, that phase zero is about a million meters. Phase one will be four million meters. Uh, we've mopped up all the available meters. Uh, about uh, 600,000 uh, have been delivered to the uh, discos. Um, 
and uh, about 400,000 plus uh, have already been installed. Uh, we track the geolocation and the names of every citizen that, uh, and household that's been metered. Um, and we're very confident that uh, before the end of the life of this administration, we'll eliminate that metering gap and put the uh, arbitrary billing as well as the energy theft uh, issues uh, to, to, to a significant uh, reduction. Um, now, in terms of uh, unbundling, I, I tried to explain it earlier. Um, the, the act allows for, uh, at a mature stage or a maturing stage in the market, for you to separate management of the grid, which would be a new independent system operator, from the transmission service provider, which builds the infrastructure. Um, so the act requires for you to unbundle first before you privatize. Uh, or concession or commercialize, depending on what approach uh, we take. So we're looking, we're doing both. Current work is to uh, determine how best to unbundle into the two parts. So the National Council on Privatization and the Ministry of Power are evaluating that. And then the second step will be to go back to the National Council on Privatization with approaches to, to unbundle it. Uh, sorry, to, to, to privatize or commercialize or concession it, would it be into sub-regions or, you know, uh, just as a whole, as a TSP uh, versus an ISO? So those are some of the uh, items we're evaluating. But as both BPE and the ministry have said, uh, these are active, ongoing conversations, and we're looking at it uh, closely uh, under the leadership of uh, His Excellency, the Vice President, uh, under the Power Sector Reform uh, Working Group. Uh, obviously, he also heads NCP, so that allows us to have uh, more synergized uh, uh, and synthesized conversations. Well, I think at this point, we've touched most of the process from generating to transmission to the end user. I have to put you on the spot here a little bit. You did use this phrase, the end of this administration. So will we get to that magical number of generating... <laughs> 100,000 megawatts before the end of this administration. Do we have a roadmap to get there? Because right now we're at 5,000, which is pretty pathetic. I'm sure we all agree. Okay, so um, 100,000, I'd say we, 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 we will have a trajectory to it, but we definitely um, will not be there in, 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 in 18 to 24 months. But what I would say is that We've always looked at the power sector from how one experiences it. And that's how we should. If I don't get power, I should, uh, you know, be unhappy and I should, uh, you know, provide that uh, feedback. But we know that we've continued to have an imbalance between generation, uh, which I think in some estimates we have line of sight to 20,000 megawatts. Where the work is occurring, and I reeled out those investment numbers, is on transmission and distribution to be able to get those um, megawatts that we can generate into the homes uh, of, of citizens. Uh, the administration also uh, is looking at uh, this power approach, not only in megawatts, but in impact to the lives of people. Uh, so you see that we have the approach to uh, with the 25 million, uh, uh, with the 5 million solar home connections that will impact 25 million Nigerians uh, under the Economic Sustainability Plan, we're providing low interest financing for developers uh, to come and roll out uh, uh, solar systems or mini grids. And, and we did launch uh, that uh, with, uh, with, with His Excellency, the Vice President in Jigawa uh, last month. So we are working to ensure that the value chain is integrated, that energy access uh, is improved, but, but we, we think we have a clear line of sight to at least uh, 10,000 megawatts uh, you know, during the life of the administration uh, in terms of delivered power to, to, to individual end users. I mean, uh, you know, in the spirit of having a clear line of sight, like you would say, to power production probably before the end of the administration. Somebody will have thought that the quickest win for you will be Mambila. But what is happening to Mambila? It looks like it's been bungled. I mean, nothing is happening to Mambila and it holds so much potential. 
I'd like to ask you, I mean, I think we went to arbitration on this. You know, we're set to pay 400 million US as regards Mambilla. How can we, is it to get the Chinese in 3.5 billion and we just do Mambilla once and for all, add that to the grid? Why can't we, you know, just fix Mambilla once and for all and fix every issue around it? And secondly, you're also the special advisor to the president on infrastructure. What are the infrastructure or what kind of infrastructural mix do we need for, you know, a forward-thinking Nigeria, Nigeria of the new era? I don't, I don't want to use the buzzword, Nigeria of the next 50 years. What kind of infrastructure? Is it rail? Is it fiber optics? What would be that key infrastructure or the infrastructure mix? What will it be like? Two questions. Yeah, so I think... You know, we've shown uh, under uh, the leadership of uh, President Bahari that this administration knows how to do complex infrastructure. Um, and we've come up with very innovative ways to, to execute that infrastructure. Uh, the PIDF, uh, being driven by NSIA, um, has reached very advanced stages in the Second Niger Bridge, uh, the Abuja Kano Road, and Lagos Ibadan. Um, the, the, the Lagos Ibadan Rail, uh, as well as uh, Abuja Kaduna, are, are all active. Uh, we ground broke on the coastal rail, um, you know, uh, between the southeast and the southwest. Uh, and, and we're also breaking ground on uh, Kano uh, to Kaduna. And uh, we, we approved, in fact, uh, Kano Maradi. Plus, you know, we see with the innovative financing, right. uh, uh, people uh, don't see it because R it's in R the bush. But cut we, you short again. We, we need to go on a quick break. We, we'll come back to you, be able to expatiate on all of this after the break. Sorry about this. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. We still have uh, Hamid Zakari here, uh, Special Advisor to the President on Power and Infrastructure. So, uh, as you were saying, uh, before we went on that break. Uh, yes, I was saying that I think we've, uh, the administration has shown um, it knows how to do complicated infrastructure. Uh, we um, have innovative financing mechanisms under PIDF uh, for uh, Abuja Kano Road, Lagos Ibadan Road, uh, as well as the Second Niger Bridge. Um, there's a number of rail projects that have been launched, uh, Kano Maradi, the coastal rail line. Um, as well as uh, coming up uh, Kano Kaduna. Um, and uh, I was just talking about AKK, uh, which it's, you know, out in the bush, so people don't see it, but uh, we deliver uh, into the ports 30 kilometers of line pipe uh, monthly that is being used to integrate our, our um, gas value chain, uh, spreading it across from, from the south to the north. Uh, so... Uh, we know how to do complicated infrastructure. The, the administration under the leadership of uh, President Buhari uh, is, is, is pushing with Infraco, um, the, the CBN led uh, with uh, AFC and NSI, one trillion infrastructure fund. Um, as you know, the, the, the uh, RFPs were out uh, for, for a fund manager. Uh, for that, um, you know, uh, infrastructure investment vehicle. Uh, so I think uh, in terms of the question of uh, what's infrastructure for the future, we need to enhance our roads. Uh, we need to integrate our transportation with, with rail. Um, and uh, we definitely need to work on our, our, our digital infrastructure uh, which continues to be uh, one of the largest growing sectors uh, in the economy with, with what the Minister of uh, Communication and Digital Economy and, and his team uh, are, are, are leading alongside private investors. So um, we're confident that uh, at the end of this administration, uh, Mr. President will be known as the infrastructure president. Um, and we hope uh, and continue to plan that that infrastructure will touch the lives of people by creating jobs um, because that's the end outcome that we need. Now, in terms of Mambila, uh, I, I've stated we know how to do complex infrastructure. It is, um, you know, not infrequent or uncommon for you to see infrastructural projects having long gestation periods 
Um, the pre-work for Mambila is, is, is ongoing. Um, uh, there are some issues that uh, are being clarified uh, between uh, the ministries of power and, and justice. Um, we will set it on a good trajectory uh, by the end of the life of the administration. But as I said, you know, all complex infrastructure um, has gestation periods and, and, and we can't rush this. But we will be able to complete Zungeru by the end of the year. And we don't hear so much media about that, but that's 700 megawatts of hydroelectric power that will be coming onto the grid uh, by the end of this year. And, and the Ministry of Power, uh, led by Engineer Salah Mama, are very focused on that. So Mambila is definitely important, but we have a number of other infrastructure projects that the administration has shown uh, a clear ability to, to execute, and we will complete and conclude the majority of those. Okay, uh, Ahmad, we've talked about quite a number of issues, but what are the next steps, particularly with regard to the uh, national grid? The national grid is perpetually collapsing, as if uh, there's some kind of demon, uh, you know, uh, descending on it. So what are the plans, particularly with regard to off-grid options and also renewables? Yep. So even on the national grid, I think the metrics are not out there. Um, in 2016, we had 28 adverse grid events where the grid, you know, collapsed either partially or completely. Uh, as at the end of last year, we had four. Thus far this year, we've only had two. Uh, it's not an excuse, but I think the investments in strengthening the grid is what has led to that reduction. Uh, and we desperately need to complete the procurement of the SCADA uh, digital system that helps you um, have an automated management of the grid. But there's funding for that, and the procurement is ongoing, but we need to accelerate that. Um, so, so even on the TCN side with these grid events, every time it happens, it feels like the end of the world, and we should all complain. Uh, but as I showed you the metrics, uh, as I discussed them, have shown a continued reduction in those adverse grid events. Now, on renewables, um, it, you know, the government plans, uh, from a policy perspective, to have 30% of power uh, on the grid, uh, sorry, 30% of power in Nigeria to be by renewables by 2030. Uh, so we'll do on-grid renewables like Zungeru, Mambila, uh, additional solar, but we are investing heavily in the um, investments that impact the lives of our rural dwellers. So, uh, as I stated, we have 140 billion naira uh, as uh, under the Solar Power Niger program that is being accessed by developers to create mini grids and roll out solar home systems. And we plan um, by the by the end of next year to have five million uh, additional connections catalyzed. Um, and we've already seen with the announcement of the A-Solar NDPHC transaction uh, with the first 100,000 already being uh, rolled out uh, that we're on that trajectory. So uh, we're going to continue to push renewables. Uh, prior to this administration, uh, renewables was not used for rural electrification at all, but the policy of uh, Mr. President as executed by uh, the Rural Electrification Agency has really boosted the prospects of us to get uh, the millions of Nigerians off-grid uh, onto a clean, renewable uh, energy uh, system. Uh, if you go to Rokota in Niger, Torankawa in Sokoto, uh, Jengepe in Jigawa, Mokoloki, um, and many other localities, they actually have more power than, than certain urban areas because they have hybrid uh, solar, battery, and, and, and mini-grid uh, solutions uh, that, uh, you know, my, my brother at the REA, Ahmed Salihijo, and the team continue to drive uh, aggressively. So uh, the administration will put us on a path to eliminating uh, the, the individuals without energy access. I do think we need to communicate those efforts better. Um, and as part of that, obviously, engagements with the morning show uh, and, uh, and, and other media houses will, will help us get the word out. 
Well, that's really great work being done by the REA then. And yes, in line with what you just said and your earlier reference to Zungeru and the underreporting thereof, do you have any updates you'd like to share about infrastructure? Because you did refer just now to Infraco. Last thing we heard was that the Ministry of Finance was looking for ways to bolster Nigeria's PPP framework. So do you have any updates for us on that score? Dr. we have just about a minute, yeah, so, um, a minute uh, to go. So just keep it brief. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so, so what I'd say, uh, Infraco uh, is, 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 is fully funded for the one trillion seed fund from CBN, AFC, and NSIA. We did hold a, a very robust session uh, where the finance minister chaired uh, the BPE and many private investors on revamping the PPP framework. We have um, many brownfield assets, uh, the narrow gauge rail, um, you know, Alscon, and many other assets that are being underutilized. And we're going to look at new greenfield investments, but also ensuring that with the additional funding, brownfield assets that have underperformed can be rehabilitated and, and rejuvenated. Uh, and uh, that, that's kind of the focus uh, and I'll be looking forward to joining the morning show again soon to, to talk more about power and infrastructure. Yes, we also look forward to always having you on the program. Thank you very much for joining us and for helping us to shed light on issues of uh, great interest to Nigerians in the power sector. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.